Welcome to today's study of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Join Dr. Sumrall as he shares with you the in-depth knowledge he's received from the Holy Spirit and over 60 years of ministry. Nothing brings me more joy than speaking to you regarding the miraculous. We live in a mundane world today that does not wish to acknowledge the miraculous. All these nine gifts of the Spirit are miracle, and we are involved in miracle when we deal with the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. In this specific manner, we're dealing with the gift of prophecy first, because I presume it's the smallest of all the gifts, and that we should deal with it first and work from there up. There are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. The first three of them are gifts of revelation, where there is supernatural revelation. There are three gifts of power, strength, or energy, and they are the second in command with the power of God. And then there happens to be the third area of inspiration that we're dealing with right now. They're all necessary, they're all good, and all of them will change your life. Say, change my life. life. That's exactly what they will do, and they will also change the church. In your introduction, we want you to know that God is all-powerful. It is an awesome thought that he chooses to use you or me as channels of his sovereign power to bless this world in which we live today. One of the ways he does use us is through a gift called the gift of prophecy. Now we understand that words are very powerful. Words change empires. Uh, words, Words change nations. Words change persons. They're very powerful. In these lessons on the vocal and inspirational gifts, we witness the remarkable power of words spoken up from the Spirit. But words that are are anointed and inspired of the Holy Ghost, they can change all of us. And that is the purpose of teaching regarding the gifts of the Spirit. Prophecy involves the the human part of us. It, It involves our tongue to speak, our lungs to expand and utter forth, and also our human will, because you can resist the gifts of the Spirit, you can feel the anointing and not correspond with it. It also has to do with faith. You must know that you know, ensure that you're sure that you're speaking from God and not from your own human person. Because if you speak from your own human person, it is certainly only human, and it could be right or it could be wrong. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 10, uh, the great apostle is giving us there the nine gifts of the Spirit, verses 8 to 10, and he says, and to another prophecy. I like that because God wants the gifts to be distributed through the entire church world, through the entire body of Christ. So to another, uh, he gives the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy is one of the three gifts that we call in the category of inspiration. In this group of studies, we have, we have now come to the ecstatic gifts. I'm trying to get you to feel that we're moving in, 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 in a joy area and into a vocal area area, and and that uh, these gifts do something. They're gifts of inspiration. That means they lift up the body. You let them function in the body is is immediately lifted by the power of God. Uh, They are especially uh, different from the gifts of revelation, where God reveals the future and the present, and also the human personality and the three gifts that are related to Uh, revelation. Uh, They are different from the gifts of power or energy where God does something, a miracle for you, or the gift of faith functioning you in remarkable healings. Those are the three gifts 
of power. In the gift of prophecy, it is mentioned 22 times in chapters just 11 through 14 of 1 Corinthians that reveals to us the importance of functioning as a body in, in, this, in these gifts. It is much more important <coughs> and urgency that we should <coughs> accept concerning this gift. It is entirely supernatural in its nature. Uh, where most people miss the gifts of the Spirit. They think they're functional in their natural person, uh, in their carnal person, in their Adamic nature, which is not true. In 1 Corinthians 12 and 7, it's calls the gift, the gift a manifestation of the Spirit of God. And that is, that is prophecy. It is speaking about men speaking to others uh, supernaturally and in, with, a, with excitement and enthusiasm. In 1 Corinthians 14 and 3, but he that prophesieth, uh, he speaketh unto men. Uh, say men. men. Say men. men. How, you, how many believe that means women too? Yeah. All right. Then he is not speaking to God, you see. You ought to put a circle around it. If you don't know who is being spoken to, you might miss the whole thing. And when we don't read the word carefully, then we certainly do miss what he's talking about that this gift is for men and, 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 and women. And it, it does three things. You can, you can mark those uh, uh, in 1 Corinthians 14 and 3. It says, He that prophesieth, he speaketh unto men to three things. Edification. Now this building is an edifice. It's something that somebody built up. So this gift is a builder upper. When you come in low through the gates of the sanctuary, you go out tall and handsome and happy through those same gates. Because that's the business of the Holy Spirit through this gift is to, is to edify you, to build you up. So that means a church that does not have this gift cannot be built up in the same way because the gift has not functioned. There's one problem with the gifts that I'd like to address in just a moment of time, and it, it is that uh, they can get too ordinary with you. I have been in churches where one time they were so excited about the gifts, and slowly uh, they're dull. Uh, I have seen in churches where someone will get up and walk out in the middle of someone speaking in tongues, which is a message for the church, and they get up and wander down the aisle and out the door. It, it only reveals to you they will never have any function and operation of the gifts of the Spirit in their lives. And when they reach out for help, they'll find out the toilet's just a stinking place. You know? And they missed it all. If you cannot teach yourself to be quiet before the Lord when the Lord is blessing, you're going to miss everything God has. And there's some people, they... You know, they're like right close to a spring of water and they're dying of thirst, screaming at everybody, why am I dying of thirst? And it's because you don't drink. Right. You've got to put forth an effort that when God speaks, listen. Yeah. Amen. And if you don't listen, then you don't receive it. Then you go out saying, I wish I had more. Well, you really don't. That's just your brain rattling around up there. If you want more, you go after it. And you're attentive to it, you know. And let God say one word, you, you, you get a hold of it and you don't turn it loose. God wants us to receive of his anointing and his power in our lives. And all the people said, it says this gift has to do with edification, which means to build you up. Now, if the Bible says it, I believe it. How about you? Then it will build you up. And the absence of it, you did not get built up. You just go when a Strange little syndrome, in and out, and in and out, and in and out. Then he says the second ministry of this gift is exhortation. In every service of ours, we get a, an exhortation. I had one this morning from one of our friends that are, that are here uh, right now. They told me what God had done in their lives, and, and, and it, just, it just lifted me up, the miracle of God taking place in, in their lives. Exhortation says, don't stop here. I've told you before, the problem with full gospel people, and I've known them for 75 years, is that they're too soon satisfied. 
If they just get one little gift, just speaking in tongues, they rattled out. Rather than praising God, they say, man, we're better than the Baptists. Well, that's a very poor excuse to make. And I tell you, the Methodists don't have what we've got. And that don't mean anything either. You see, uh, we need to, number one, love the gifts. Uh, number two, seek the gifts. And, and number three, we, we should hold them tenderly and tightly. And if you don't, there are people that are reared around the atmosphere that you're in right now, and they go right out and go to a worldly church that don't even believe the virgin birth of Jesus, sit down there and says, I like a little church. Well, honey, don't you know why it's little? It's dead. You don't have enough sense to know why it's little, you know? You go right down here to the graveyard, and their house is six foot. You want to crawl in there too? Are you here? 99% of those people in this city don't know how to live or where to live. They don't even know where to go to church, and they don't know what it would do for them if they went. And they go to any kind of old dead church and say, I get to church. Well, so did the devil. What did you get when you got there? He always hangs around to see what he can do. We need to move where God is moving. We need to sit where God is moving. We need to listen where God is moving. We need to move with God. Prophetically, these are the last days. If you don't move with God, you'll miss the next mighty revival that God will give this earth, and he's getting ready for something nobody has ever seen before. But exhortation means just exactly what I got through doing there. Building you up, pushing you up, that's what exhort means. It means don't stop, don't quit, keep going in Jesus' name. And then it says in the third ministry of it is comfort. I'm sure that we will be getting uh, to that, uh, but there are many, many precious people that if they don't get comfort in church, they don't get comfort anywhere. They have no comfort at home. They have no comfort where they work. So if they don't find a church, a healing, a healing salve that heals their sorrows and their problems, they don't get any. And that's what this gift is for, is to bring comfort to our hearts, to heal the wounds of the past. You say, my wound can't be healed. That's a lie from the devil. That's what this gift will do. It'll bring such joy into your heart until that salve of the Spirit will move in you and it will heal your past and make your present something happy and make your, vi make your future have a vision to it. And point number two on page 35 says, uh, the definition of the gift of prophecy. The word prophecy originates from the Hebrew word naba, uh, meaning to flow forth or spring forth, or to tumble forth. Hey, that's very good. And First uh, Corinthians 14, 30, He that prophesied speaketh unto men, edification, exhortation, comfort. We see another uh, of those amazing sets of three. I have given you those sets of three this morning. Uh, this, this gift has three divine purposes in our lives. And uh, the last line of that says, this revelation is not the office. Say office. It is not the office of people who call themselves prophets. We're living in a, in a strange little area right now where a lot of people are calling themselves prophets. 99% of them are not prophets. And, uh, and they would do a lot better if they were quiet. And if they have a prophecy, make it in the bedroom and write it down and see if it comes true. Test it out a few times before you bring it to church because you can hurt people in church by prophesying over them and it does not come true. If you, if you make a prophecy and it does not come true, you are a false prophet. And don't be calling yourself anything else but that. You've just got to speak the truth from God because God does not lie. And all the people said? Amen. And your point number four here, uh, what is the gift, what the, pro what the gift of prophecy is not? Number one, just what I told you, it is not the office of a prophet. A prophet is a person, a man or a woman, and, and, and not a spiritual uh, gift. Uh, as a, as a, uh, God has placed in the church, uh, you know, apostles and prophets and, and pastors and evangelists and teachers, and, and they are a gift to the church, of course. But we're not talking about a person as a gift here. We're talking about an experience. In Ephesians 4 and 11, it says, Philip, it is a spiritual gift. Philip had four daughters that prophesied, but, but, they, but they were not prophets, prophetesses in Acts 21 and 9. They, they were 
just young people with a holy anointing upon them that spoke forth the words that of the three things that I just told you about there. The prophetic office always predicts the future if, it, if you are a prophet, that's all it does. The gift of prophecy never does, and this gift of prophecy, it has nothing to do with the future, has nothing to do with speaking of the unknown. It is what it says it is. It exhorts you, it, it comforts you, it uh, builds you up, but that's, that is its total ministry. Take it out of its context then you do not have biblical truth properly arranged. The prophetic office always predicts the future. Uh, William Smith in his Bible dictionary states, it is certain that neither prescience or, or prediction are implied by the term in the Hebrew, Greek, or English languages. And, and so know that and understand that and let it function where God wants it to function. Prophecy is not intended for any kind of guidance. This spiritual prophecy that we're teaching about does those three things and no more. It does not pretend to give you, to give you guidance for your life. No, no gift can take the place of common sense, and no ministry is to foretell. And uh, if it's not built for that, then we must not try to make it be that. Prophecy is not, is not regular preaching. There are preachers who think they have it, and, and a spirit of prophecy could come upon them while they are ministering. Normally, they're preaching from their notes, and they're preaching the Word of God, and that's it. And, and God can anoint His Word as they, as they preach it. To preach means to proclaim or announce the good news of the gospel, and, and it is the natural mind speaking by the Spirit. Prophecy is the mind of the Holy Spirit speaking. Preaching is in inspired, but it is not supernatural. Prophecy is a supernatural utterance from God to the church, to the body. It is not your mind functioning. It comes out of the, your spirit area of, of your body. The possessor of the gift, uh, they control the prophecy. <clears throat> this E part is very, is very necessary for you to know. Uh, you're operating this gift may never become a problem to you, but there might be a problem in somebody else that you meet and functioning the thing the wrong way. And then you can take the Word of God and say, you better study a little and, and, and see here. The possessor of the gift, they control it. In 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 32, and the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Uh, that I've, I've had people say, oh, I can't quit, I can't quit. Well, you better slap yourself because you need it. And when you can't quit, somebody else is taking over besides the Holy Spirit. And, 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 and you're under bondage to a thing, and <clears throat> God is not a God of bondage. <clears throat> In any of the nine gifts, you can cut them off any time you want to. You can offend the Holy Spirit if you wish to. You can refuse to have them function if you like. In the denomination that I was brought up in, if we had a conference in a city, maybe had a governor or a mayor or someone out to speak for us, our convener would always say, now don't you people speak in tongues while the guest is here, he will think we're crazy. And, and, and I mean, I've heard that dozens of times, not just one or two times. And so when the guest came in to speak for three or four minutes, he looked, there were a bunch of zombies there. <laughs> Nobody would even turn his head, much less say anything. I know when he left, he said, that's the queerest bunch of ducks I ever saw, uh, you know. And I grew up in that for many years. And you know what? The Holy Spirit stopped messing with them at all. They want the gifts to function. They don't function at all. You say, what? Well, they quench the Holy Spirit. In Oregon, uh, in Portland, Oregon, one night I listened to Oral Roberts preach. And right behind him was the governor of the state. And Oral got up and preached on the nine gifts of the Spirit. And, and, uh, and, and when he got through and sat down, the governor jumped up and said, that's the greatest sermon I ever heard. Well, he didn't know what it was. If you'd ask him what he said, he said, I don't know. I just felt good. He says, I felt good while he was talking. That's the greatest thing I ever heard. You, you'd have said, uh, do you know the nine gifts of the Spirit? He says, the nine gifts of who? All I heard was oral, you know. And, and, and so if you let these things function as you, as they, as they must function in you, they, they will teach others what they're all about. Can you say amen? amen. <clears throat> the, 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 the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. The gift is to be regulated. 
If someone goes on too long in church, someone else can stand up and say, my dear friend, you have just said enough. Please be seated. Because some people speak out of pride. They say, just let me show you who I am. I want everybody to see who I am. And that's the wrong motive for the function of these gifts. These gifts must always function to do those three things, to edify the body of Christ, to, to exhort the body of Christ, to comfort the body of Christ. And all the people said, on, on your page 36, under edification, it says, a, a gift, a gift is primarily to edify the church. Uh, th that is this gift of, of prophecy. It is not directed to unbelievers. It is for the church. Edification, in its root meaning, signifies to erect, to build up, and to strengthen. And, and so we must use it in that way. The gifts of inspiration were given to the church by the Holy Spirit to keep that church strong. We need something. And, the, and these three gifts are given to us that you and I and all of us will be strong believers in Christ and also happy believers in Christ. If there's anything that God don't want is a long face. Are you here? Religion can give you a long, long face, but spirituality can give you a broad, broad face. And between the two, you bless more people with a broad face. Can you say amen? Multitudes of Christians are in great need of having their spiritual lives built up, strengthened. There's no doubt the reason why Paul spoke in tongues more than an entire church full of people. He desired to be built up, and this is one of the secrets of his remarkable strength, the function of the gifts of inspiration in his life. Then we come to the one on exhortation. I have spoken about that, <clears throat> how we can all be exhorted, that we will not be discouraged, that we will not quit. You would be amazed in any city in America how many people need exhortation. Right now, there are hundreds of thousands of full gospel people home and fundamental people at home I don't feel like going. What's wrong with you? Let somebody ring the doorbell and say, let's play golf, and you got a good feeling about it. Let us go to see a basketball game. you got a good feeling about it. Or let's, let's go to Bishop's where we can eat all we can and can all we get. Yeah. Yeah. We get a good feeling real quick there. Yeah. The devil don't want you to be spiritual. You have to make yourself be spiritual. When it's time to come to the house of God, there are no options. Yeah, or right. you will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ for, as an unfaithful person. And 90% of all the people that claim to be a Christian are unfaithful. They do as they please, they act as they please, and they don't follow the moving of the Holy Ghost. That's right. I warn you to be led by the Spirit and not by your carnality. And all the people says. Amen. How does this gift, number eight, how does the gift of prophecy function? When a Christian in the church or before other Christians speak under a Holy Spirit anointing in the common language of those people, not in an unknown tongue, it is, it is prophesying. The speaker, a man or a woman, is anointed, directed, and energized by the Holy Spirit. An example of this is the exhortation Peter gave on the day of Pentecost. He didn't have any notes. He stood up and spoke by the Spirit, and when he did, it worked. There are limitations to this gift. That's your point number nine. Now we know in part, and we prophesy in part. So no, none of us have the fullness of the functioning of this gift uh, within us. Your point number 10 says prophecy is to be judged by others who are present. Now some people don't know that. They think they cannot be judged. Uh, this on page 38. It can be judged. Let the prophets speak two or three, and let the others judge. And so it is a, a gift from God that the others can say, let me see now, is this correct? Is this right? Is this from the Lord? And, and so forth. And we give you a host of beautiful scriptures on that. And then in your point number 11, the gift of prophecy is your personal relationship uh, to it. And, and uh, in, in 1 Corinthians 14 and 39, it says desire to prophesy. Isn't that beautiful? And this is one of the gifts that you should desire to prophesy. 1 Corinthians 14 and 11. And 1 Corinthians 14 and 1, it says, desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you might prophesy. Isn't that beautiful? 
So this is one of the necessary gifts. It's one of the gifts that brings a lot of peace in our hearts, a lot of joy into our lives, a lot of uplift uh, to us, and drives us forward with an energy not of our own. A supernatural energy drives us forward. Now, before you get into the greater gifts or the deeper gifts, for sure you need this one. Otherwise, you'll be out there trying to function in a, in, a, in a larger gift, and you don't have the joy, you don't have the victory, you don't have the anointing, you don't have the refreshing that blesses others. You can't give others what you don't have. If you don't have joy, you can't give joy. If you don't have peace, you can't give peace. And so all you can share with anybody is what you have within you. Let's march forward into the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We have, we have tapes, we have books, we have all kinds of material on this subject. And the next great revival will be totally a revival of the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Let's function in them. Can you say amen? amen. Most full gospel churches, so-called, will not function in the next revival. They won't even know what's going on, and they will criticize it because it's different from what they have. That's right. Did you know why people criticize you? It's because you've got something they don't have. And, and so when you have something somebody else doesn't have, he immediately says, it must be wrong, I don't have it. Yeah. From looking at you, they must be right because you don't have it. Let's give the Lord a hand, everybody. <laughs> we will keep going uh, in, in uh, our, our speaking and teaching on the gifts of the Spirit. We don't want you just to hear these. We want you to learn these and share these with others. We want you to become teachers in the great Word of God. Can you say amen? amen? Praise God. God loves you. God richly, God richly bless you. Television is something we all grew up with. Watching our favorite programs was more than just a hobby. It was a family tradition. Television brought us the news of landing a man on the moon and successfully returning him to Earth. Today, television has become a powerful source of conveying values that shape the thought of our nation. Consider that with today's satellite technology, just one dollar a day can bring God's message of hope into 500 homes. In one average suburban area, this could include as many as 200,000 individuals. For the cost of a cup of coffee, you could share in the preaching of the gospel to those who might not otherwise receive it. Take time to write out a check today in support of the LaCie Broadcasting Network. One day, you'll be glad you did. pray that you've been blessed by today's program. For more information about Dr. Summerall's teaching or to request audio or video cassettes of today's program, please write to LaCie, Box 12, South Bend, Indiana, 46624, or call 219-291-1010. Please refer to the program number on the screen when corresponding. Thank you.